Welcome to Courtside, everyone, a discussion of the post-election litigation. It is day 38 after the election, and I have a special episode for you tonight. Trump's losses are getting so high, I think it's one out of 57, but at this point, I think it requires a study of polynomial mathematics, so I will get back to you tomorrow and report on his additional losses. Today, I want to focus on one big thing that's happened, and it's huge. Ladies and gentlemen, Trump's Texas Kraken lawsuit has cracked. It's died. And it's died a slow, painful death. A unanimous death. Nine to zero in the United States Supreme Court. Today, we're just going to cover this one thing. We'll pick up tomorrow on the rest. But this case was, according to no one less than Donald Trump, quote, the big one. This was the one he was pinning his hopes on. The one that he tweeted a picture of Amy Comey, Comey Barrett out and said things about. The, today, just three hours ago, at 3.28 p.m., he tweeted, quote, If the Supreme Court shows great wisdom and courage, the American people will win perhaps the most important case in history, and our electoral process will be respected again. Well, hats off to you, President Trump. That's exactly what the Supreme Court did three hours later. They unanimously rejected this joke of a lawsuit that you and the state of Texas filed. Remember, this was Texas going into the U.S. Supreme Court and saying there's election fraud in four other states, and they sought to stop that. And President Trump, you went in and said, yeah, I think there is, and I want to be a party to that lawsuit. Now, there were so many problems with this lawsuit. I covered them over the last two nights on courtside. It's been a joke start to finish legally. It would topple our entire system of states' rights if such a thing were accepted. But then some of you got worried because 17 Republican attorneys general agreed with this lawsuit. And then yesterday, 106 members of Congress agreed with this lawsuit, of course, all Republican. Then today, 20 more Republican members of Congress, including the top Republican in the House, Kevin McCarthy, agreed with this lawsuit. Well, unfortunately for them, the United States Supreme Court unanimously disagreed with the lawsuit. The order was strong, powerful, and just a few words just denied this joke. Now, there is some language in there that says that Justices Alito and Thomas would have found original jurisdiction. That does not make the case seven to two by any stretch. They went on to say that if they agree, all they were saying was, these two justices were saying, look, we think that Texas should be able to file papers in our court. But crucially, they said it wouldn't matter. You could file all the papers you want. They lose on the merits. That is a nine to law loss, a nine to zero loss, including justices nominated by Republican presidents. And I had two reactions reading the U.S. Supreme Court's decision tonight. The first one was, boy, this Hugo Chavez guy, he's really powerful. What has he got on Gorsuch and Alito? Second, it reminded me of something that Chief Justice John Roberts said. I'm uh, beyond fortunate myself to hold the position at Hogan Lovells that he held before going on the bench. And John Roberts, when he was a Supreme Court lawyer, argued a big Supreme Court case. And I remember, I've heard this, that one morning, uh, he found out he lost the, at the Supreme Court nine to zero. So he calls the client saying, I'm, I'm so afraid to tell you I've got some bad news. Unfortunately, you lost in the Supreme Court nine to zero. The client says, how could that have happened? And without missing a beat, m then Mr. Roberts replied, well, I guess there weren't 10 justices. And tonight you ask, what's the difference between politics and law? And you look to a decision like tonight. Lady Justice is blindfolded in the statues. And that's for a reason, because justice is supposed to be doled out whether you're rich or poor, man or woman, black or white, Republican or Democrat. I don't doubt that the six justices on the Supreme Court would have preferred a President Trump to a President Biden. They might be the only six left, but, uh, you know, I don't doubt that. But that's not how they approach this. And, you know, that's a nice thing about the Supreme Court. But tonight, and while I do celebrate the decision tonight, there is something that gives me a lot of pause. 
because in government service, it shouldn't be about the judges. It shouldn't be left to the judges to think that way. Our system doesn't work if you're in government and you get to act lawlessly with bad faith and you hope the courts are gonna fix it later on. It only works when people try and do the right thing from the get-go, from the start. And that's why I said yesterday, there's only one rule for people in government and it was the rule I followed and so many people, you know, whether Republican or Democrat, which was, how would I feel if folks on the other side of the aisle did this in the reverse? Trump's approach, by contrast, has always been, what can I get away with? And the Republican Party under him, their approach is, what can I help President Trump get away with? It is so profoundly lawless. It's reprehensible. It's evil. It's as un-American as you can get. You want to talk about Hugo Chavez? The Republican Party has now become that. It's the party that thinks that they know best. They throw out principle. They throw out the Constitution. They just want to get ahead in the moment. It's a constitutional disgrace. Disgrace. Shame on them for it. Whether you're conservative or liberal, I respect you. Uh, I respect you so much. But this party doesn't speak for you. It speaks only for their craven, kraken interests and in holding the reins of power. It's evil and un-American, and it's fundamentally wrong. And most of all today, it's a dead loser. I'll see you tomorrow.